This is the eLearning Alchemist podcast. Welcome to this edition of the Sunday Rant on the eLearning Alchemist podcast. Today, we'll pick up where we left off in the last rant, exploring some of Edward Deming's most famous quotes and applying them to learning and development. If you're unsure why we'd do that and who Edward Deming is even, check out episode 35. So without further ado, let's get into the quotes and let's start with data. Quote five, you've probably heard this one before. It was Deming who coined the phrase, you can't manage what you don't measure. This one should be obvious. If we can't or don't measure the impact of the learning strategies and interventions we create, then we can't conclusively say if they're making any kind of impact to our organizations. And any changes we make have an equal potential to make the training worse as it does to make it better. This doesn't mean we can't improve the actual training. If a topic is confusing and we make it less confusing, we've made the training better. But it's possible to deliver training that has zero impact to the organization, then make it better, and still have zero impact. We can't manage learning initiatives in a meaningful way if we can't measure its results. Quote six, Deming asserted that, without data, you're just another person with an opinion. There is no shortage of opinions. Heck, this entire podcast is an opinion. But when it comes to influencing our organizations, nothing is more important than data. We can lean heavily on storytelling in the classroom, but in the boardroom, we need to bring something more, and that more is data. First, we need data to get initial buy-in for learning initiatives. If we can show how the change will increase revenue or decrease costs, that is, to influence profit, we have a good chance of getting buy-in. Arguing that we should spend money to increase learner engagement, well, that's just silly. Second, our arguments won't be particularly strong if we can't prove that what we've been doing to this point have had an impact. We gain tremendous strength when we can show either how our programs are making a difference or how they failed and what we're doing about it. Both are valuable. Quote seven, Deming stated that confusing common causes with special causes will only make things worse. Smile sheets. Yes, those annoying pieces of paper that learners rush through as fast as they can with little or no thought because, well, it's the only thing separating them from leaving and going home. Too often, we receive a couple of pieces of feedback on these forms and overreact to these special cases instead of digging deeper to validate if they are in fact real or just a couple of whiny friends bitching about training because, well, they bitch about everything. There's another level to this as well. How many training programs have been built because one person made one egregious mistake? We get a request from a leader who's particularly fired up about the error and insists that everyone be trained. And so we build training. But what if the person who made the mistake doesn't have a knowledge or skill gap? I mean, that's what training fixes, right? What if they just made an honest error? Training won't prevent the next error, if that's the case. And training everybody only teaches them that we hate them and that we don't value their time. We need better data, and we need to stop allowing leaders to overreact and waste money on training if training is not the right solution. Quote number eight, Deming maintained that everyone is a customer for somebody or a supplier for somebody. It's my opinion that L&D gets this confused. We seem to believe that learners are our customers. But this simply isn't the case for most learning and development teams. No, our customer is the business we serve. Our primary objective as L&D professionals should be to keep our customer happy and to serve their needs. This may come in the form of creating better learning experiences to engage and intrigue learners, but that should only be with the intent to improve the results of our work for the business we serve. And further to this notion, quote number nine, Deming affirmed that innovation comes from the producer, not the customer. If we are the producers of training, it is incumbent upon us to drive innovation in our field. Unfortunately, L&D's focus has consistently been on improving the learning intervention for the learner, not improving the subsequent results for the business. Given our reputation across all industries, you'd think we'd focus on that more. But for some reason, we don't. 
When asked for training, we so frequently turn around and create instructor-led training or e-learning, even if that's not what our customers need, or if we've proven again and again that one-time events rarely, if ever, impact business results. We just keep on doing it. It's on us to figure out which problems can be solved using learning and how to develop and execute a strategy that will actually solve those problems. We're selling snake oil if we aren't focused on improving results and instead focus on making better PowerPoints and role plays. Quote number 10, Deming said, a rule should suit the purpose. We have lots of rules in L&D. We must have a learning objective slide, do an icebreaker, put pictures on every slide, ask questions in a predictable pattern, only use positive language, never make anyone upset, and so on and so on. All of these rules have a purpose, but more often than not, they're bastardized interpretations of something more complicated. We've diluted them to the point where they no longer serve their purpose. We should be continually challenging what we do and why we do it that way. Because how we've always done it, well, it's not working. And finally, quote number 11, Deming informed us that it does not happen all at once. There is no instant pudding. As sad as that is. Deming may have been a genius, but he also had a sense of humor. We treat our training programs like instant pudding. Not in how we make them, no, no, we take forever doing that, but in what we expect training to do. We cannot put people through an assembly line and expect that we're going to churn out shiny new trainees that are automatically upgraded and improved. There's no reset and update button. We know this is true. And yet we continue to do it over and over. Learning is a process, not an event. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes focus and commitment. So as long as we continue to treat it like an event, all of our budgets would be better spent on instant pudding. At least people would like that. That's the end of the rant. Jump into the description, click the link, and leave your thoughts on this podcast. 